Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Umar. Welcome back. Um, More like and, uh, so I'm so happy to have you back. Uh, people have been saying, when can we have Dr. Umar back? When can we have Dr. Umar back? And so here he is, alhamdulillah. Um, so Dr. Umar, I was reading in your uh, book, um, what is it, uh, the the one on, I always mess up the title of your book. Cain's, Cain's Creed? Cain's Creed, yes. You yeah. wrote a very interesting statement, and it was mm -hmm. so interesting that you actually highlighted it. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned the fact that while people who don't have any belief, they don't feel responsible. And, uh, you know, if you don't have any belief system, you don't believe you're accountable, then you kind of like you're absolved. Then you say if you have a belief system sometimes, sometimes believing absolves you from that sense of responsibility, too. And you talk about how, like, uh, all believers learn that God holds them responsible for their actions. So far, so good. But many, for many, belief absolves them of all uh, of all other responsibilities, consciously or subconsciously. Those who are born again and or chosen have diminished respect for others who do not share their sect or their faith. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a big problem in the Muslim Ummah. You know, uh, we uh, belong, we have different sects and a lot of times it's kind of like, you know, like, um, like if I graduate from Georgetown, then there's this affinity for everyone in Georgetown. So if I graduated from this uh, Dar al or if I graduated from Azhar, or if I graduated from Medina, it's like there's this like affinity that we're like, we have this special place. And if, you know, it's me and my sheikh, we're like saved and the others, I don't know about them. And and then you feel like you can judge other Muslims and, and you know, you have, it's, it's kind of like your sect, your belief system almost absolves you. Yes, from... it, it can. This is a conscious thing. That's on the surface. Uh, deep down inside, we, we, we walk in fear. But we 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 try to cover that fear uh, with this uh, you know facade of a belief system, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a mob mentality uh, that you're describing, and uh, you run with the mob that um, you know believes the same things that you do. Sometimes the mob has no belief; they just run. <laughs> you see, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, this is what the New World Order elitist, uh, those Satanist, Satanists who are guiding the whole world right now, or misguiding the whole world, this is what they depend on. They depend on people not thinking, uh, and they depend on people, this deep-seated fear that I'm talking about, uh, to uh, stampede the herd. And um, so, you know, you, you look at this COVID thing, and people are running from it as if... Uh, you know, it's some dangerous dragon. It doesn't exist. I mean, it, it, it exists as a normal virus. That's all it is. It's way out of proportion. But what are they afraid of? They're afraid of dying and they're afraid of the judgment. Or they're afraid that there's nothing, you see. Mm. You see. So it's either the judgment or nothing. Anyway, uh, most people fear that. Only the Stoic doesn't fear it. If they're a non-believer, the Stoic just says the Stoic accepts life uh, as it comes, and they do their best to remain uh, calm, and uh, they don't think too much about the future. Uh, they think about the moment. They live in the moment, and they try to make the best of it. And uh, when you're making the best of the moment, that's a good intention, and we're judged by intentions because you've studied it, and then you make a convention, a conviction. Uh, based upon that belief system, and that belief system guides you to treat the other person as if they're an enemy, then you have a problem with Allah, okay? Because mm -hmm. most often than not, that other person is not an enemy, okay? But your belief system tags them as an enemy, and you've chosen to run with the mob, and that mob is providing your welfare, okay, uh, for the most part. And so this is the you know this this is something that people run with, and they don't think about things uh, systematically or in a deep uh, philosophical sense. Uh, and 
one of the reasons that occurs or that doesn't occur is because we're so busy trying to put rice in our bowl. We're so busy trying to just survive uh, because of the world system. And now this new uh, ab abnormal uh, level that we've attained with this COVID thing is, is making people even more anxious. So they're running from their fears and then they're trying to blame the other person uh, for, uh, in order to make themselves feel better, okay, about themselves. So it, we're, what we're talking about is insecurity. That's the basis of that statement that I that I that right. I wrote. Right. It's it, you. I don't remember the context, but it's it's a sign of insecurity. Uh, when we talk about insecurity what we're really talking about is a lack of iman, a mm. lack of faith. Now, most people talk about faith, especially believers, they talk about faith. And when you first met me online here, we had some discussions about that. Right. We that, talked um, about I don't have to discuss. Journey. Yeah, I, I don't have to discuss it at length or try to philosophize it. It's not an abstract idea for me. It's a reality for me. Mm. Uh, and there are very few people that I've met who have experienced this reality. And what I'm talking about is depending upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your provision, mm. okay, for your protection, for mm. your refuge, okay, and not the mob, mm. okay. Most people are depending upon the mob, and at the same time they say they're depending upon Allah, and they're they're speaking a lie because they're really dependent upon the mob. So when you're running with the mob, that's a uh, an affirmation that your faith, your idol, is the mob. Hmm. Okay, you believe in that mob more than you believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Otherwise, you would stand. If you believed in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you would stand up for justice. Hmm. And no one would intimidate you, okay? And this is to the point of death, okay? Now, the only reason people don't uh, stand up at certain moments is because they have other responsibilities. For example, um, if other people are dependent upon you, then you may not stand up at a certain moment and sacrifice yourself, for their sake, mm. okay? Mm. Now, Allah sees all these things and understands these things. The mob doesn't. <laughs> right. The mob looks at everything superficially. That's why politics always wins the day, because the mob is given the vote. They're given the franchise. Mm. And uh, this is not Islam. Mm. Yes. The course. mob should never have the franchise. Never. Okay? Mm. Only the educated and the alim, okay, who are appointed at certain levels of society, and these levels of society have to have a relationship with each other. We've discussed this before. Uh, in order, they should be the ones that make the decisions, okay? And now you have, you're having the mob make the decisions. And the, the, the Iblis is sitting back there saying, see, see, God, I told you they were stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see how stupid they are? <laughs> you know, this is, this is, you know, Iblis is enjoying himself. And uh, <clears throat> he's whipping his demons on a daily basis. We know this from discussions we've had with jinn, that the jinn are very, very frightened, uh, those who are, uh, actively working as missionaries on the part of uh, Iblis to get people to go to hell, those who take people into idolatrous circumstances and whatnot, they, if they don't do it, they get beaten or mm. they get uh, some sort of deprivation. Oh, yeah. um, so they're also running with the mob, you see. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get, I get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you get that. So yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, on both sides of the dimensional, transdimensional divide, you have mobs, hmm. and this is not an uh, organized thing. Now, the, the 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 organized politics is designed today to 
give the mob direction. Okay, and this <coughs> this is the the result of um, uh, of uh, intense programming. Um, oh gosh, I just noticed something. My oh oh, there we go. My uh, um, the the point of it is uh, I'm trying to make here is that you have mobs on both sides of the dialectic, and Satan has, as I've described in my books and several lectures. Uh, and other people have described this too. We, everybody who tries to describe this has a different approach, uh, a slightly different uh, manner of narrative. Uh, mine is such that um, I try to uh, tell the story in, in pictures, if you will. So if on both sides of the dialectic you, uh, of this narrative, you have uh, the satanic uh, misguidance of the mob, you have the right-hand path and left-hand path. You have the Democrats, the Republicans. You have the Shia. You have the Sunni. Uh, you know this sort of thing: communists and Democrats, um, <clears throat> and they're all being misguided. They're mm. all because they're all following idolatrous systems. You see, uh, even the communists are following. Uh, you know the this the the star and the sickle of ancient Sumer, which mm. is sitting on top of the <laughs> every mosque. That's you, right. You, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. So yes. so the Satan Satan is controlling the narrative all around the world on both sides of what people uh, consider to be a divide, when in fact there is no divide because the only divide is that which does not honor idolatry. You see, if you're if you're a Muslim, you're not going to enter the mosque that has this uh, idol on top of the thing. I try to avoid them, and uh, uh, now I'm living. In, I'm I'm kind of relieved to tell you the truth. I'm living in a pagan society uh, where there are no mosques. Okay, there is no mumma umma anywhere near me, and. Uh, you know, I know that there are arguments uh, uh, that would condemn me for that, but I have my reasons for having done that, and my reasons are according to the prophetic uh, recommendations for the times that we live in, you mm -hmm. see. And if there were, were an Uma that had a mosque without a star and sickle on the top, like the communists have, then, uh, you know, I might attend, and I might even seek them out, uh, if they weren't uh, legalists uh, trying to cut my fingers off if I didn't say alhamdulillah at the right time. Right. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? No, I'm totally this, this, this obsessive compulsive nonsense. Uh, and this comes from Satan. So he's on, he's on both sides of the aisle. It doesn't matter, you see. And these Satanists are running the mob. Whether you're a believer or a non-believer, everybody's got the bloody mask on now, don't they? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And so he's controlling the world. And he's controlling the world because righteous men have not stood up to the liars. They've not stood up to the liars, okay? And uh, I, I've been doing this for quite some time. And... Um, I, I just had a conversation about this uh, with respect to my position in Malaysia. And uh, somebody pointed this out to me and, and said, oh, well, you've been a warrior uh, for quite some time with respect to the uh, telling the truth. And I, I, I suppose I have. I, I, never, I never not said something because I was afraid, okay? Uh, I went to many a mosque to uh, to 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 give um, uh, speeches when I was in Malaysia, and I always condemned Najib. Always, mm -hmm. I said I told him before he was ever indicted. I told everyone who asked me in, to invite, they, because they always asked me, "What's wrong with our Ummah? What's wrong with us?" And mm -hmm. I said, "Well, you have a leader there who's a liar, a thief, and a murderer." Mm -hmm. And you're letting him get away with it. That's what's mm -hmm. wrong with you. You see, so uh, I can't be uh, accused 
of uh, being afraid, you see. Then mm -hmm. after I would say such things, I would say, I, I always uh, invited the audience. I said, I know somebody here from the, uh, from the Secret Service is here listening to me. So if you want to arrest me here, here, put, here are my hands. Put the handcuffs on now, you see. Mm -hmm. Take me away now. And they never did. And one of the reasons they don't do it is because they're also afraid of being found out. Mm. You see? And another reason is, for example, in my book, The Hand of Iblis, I destroy uh, Tun Mahathir's uh, argument about the melee problem. Okay, oh. he called it the melee dilemma. I said, no, it's not a melee dilemma. It's a Muslim dilemma, and you're mm. responsible for it mm. because you're the leader in this country, and you're lying to your people. <laughs> mm. You know, you're lying to them. And then I reminded him in my in my book. I said, look, liars, leaders who are liars won't even smell jana. Yeah, that's what the word says. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, and so I remind them. And uh, so uh, this man probably wanted to have me murdered. But if you murder somebody like me, who's already writ written, who's already published these <laughs> things, you make me more famous. You see, yeah. <laughs> and then my books become more, <laughs> more, more, more widespread, and then more people uh, read them. So that's one of the reasons you uh, uh, these wicked people leave people like me alone. But it's also a, a, a kind of a shield or refuge uh, granted uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Thank God for that. But I, 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 I'm just, I just I, I'm trying to complete the point here. You see, the point is that people are running with the mob because they're afraid to stand up. They're, they're afraid to stand up. They're afraid of death. And they're afraid of death for these two reasons. One, judgment. The believer is afraid of the judgment. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and or they're afraid there's nothing. Mm -hmm. You see, that that's just the end. Gone. Okay. Which is what many people uh, think in, in any case. So anyway, I, I stop with that. <laughs> Go on. So, uh, Dr. Umar, uh, you, you obviously know what happened with Hagia Sophia. Keeping the whole issue aside uh, of if it was right, if it was wrong, but I want to take another perspective on this, which is sure maybe a broader perspective. But sure. you know, what's happening in India is also this kind of like nationalism, Hindus versus other Oh, dear, that's awful stuff, that one. And uh, and then, you know, it's kind of like this tribalism, this mm -hmm. tribal mentality that is set in on the world, which is which I think is playing a big role for why everything is moving towards the right. Uh, and, and then you have this tribalism through Netanyahu, the conservative party in Israel. Mm -hmm. And then you have this tribalism here in the U.S., uh, which is, you know, basically one group against all other minorities in a way and then you have the same thing happening in england uh and then this tribalism which uh which allowed this bricks uh, brexit that took place um this rise in tribalism uh, mm -hmm. now whether what happened in turkey was right or wrong but it seems to me when you contrast it with two things, the celebrations of converting a museum into a masjid or a church into a masjid versus absolutely no sadness to the fact that Hajj this year is basically a bogus Hajj. Uh, mm. and, and our prayers in our mosques have become, you know, something different than what was it supposed to be. Uh, this is this not tribalism that we're more happy over tribal things that make us happy over actual religious things like Hajj and our prayers and 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 the the breakdown of our actual think elements of Islam versus uh you know just a conversion of a, of a, 
of a church into a masjid. Uh, how do you take what I said about this, this, you know, this conservative rightist mentality, the tribal mentality versus, is that not what we're doing via this celebration? So I'll just leave that to you. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm hearing you clearly. Uh, tribalism is a, is, is a, a point of refuge. There's nothing wrong with it inherently. It's mm. natural, okay? Mm. It's when you become uh, politically dominant and then you want to rule unjustly over the other that it becomes a problem. And this is what's, what happens. And this kind of uh, mentality, this tribalism, this tribal mentality, is all too easy to fall into and it's very easy for the political manipulators to manipulate it and tribalism can also be expressed as a religious sectarianism okay and then if you have a sectarianist uh, position whether you're from pakistan or from arabia can cause further uh, division I mean, a Pakistani Sunni and an Arabian Sunni are, are different animals, <laughs> you see. And uh, the, the Arabs, I happen to know uh, by primary experience that the Arabs are very prejudiced against the Pakistanis. Yes. And um, uh, so, and they hold Pakistanis as, well, the Arabs hold everybody as second-class citizens, second-class human beings. They're like the Jews. Uh, they think uh, Islam... Uh, belong to them. Oh, did I say something insensitive again? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, this is the true. I mean, this is the case. The, the, I've I've just edited a few months ago some of the latest uh, sociological studies on this issue, and uh, all the Arab students in Malaysia think that they're superior Muslims. They think that Islam belongs to them that it's private, personal territory, and everyone else is a second-class Muslim, you see. Mm -hmm. You know, this kind of attitude uh, is, is more than divisive. It's evil. It's pure, pure evil. Uh, because then it gives you the right, for example, this is what the basis for the Wahhabi, Wahhabi position, it gave them the right, their... Uh, their perspective, uh, their spiritual pr perspective gave them the right to murder other Muslims and consume their substance, mm -hmm. okay? Well, when you're consuming the substance of the other person, you're a cannibal. Mm -hmm. This is very primitive, okay? So this kind of uh, approach to tribalism is very, very primitive. Now, if you have an approach to tribalism that, preser that preserves dignity based on uh, just behavior, that's a different matter. That's culture, mm. you see. That's high culture. For example, uh, uh, let's just uh, let's go back a few hundred years. We'll go back about 700 years uh, to the Korean Peninsula. And at that time in, um, oh, I've forgotten the name of the, uh, the city. It's not Seoul, is it? Um, in, in North Korea, no, there, there was a city in uh, North Korea that had the very first mosque, okay? And that mosque is still there. It's all run down and probably a bit of a ruin now. But 700 years ago, it was a fabulous expression mm -hmm. of the cultural Islamic zeitgeist, and it was fully respected by the Korean authorities, which at that time was a monarchy. And it was a Zen Buddhist monarchy. OK, so when you have expressions of a tribal, uh, when you have when you have expressions of tribal identity that are honoring each other in that fashion, there is nothing wrong with that approach to tribalism. That's natural. OK, and God loves Allah loves this uh, this uh, uh, ind individual expression of uh, of human being mm. okay and we're supposed to learn from each other through these mm. cultural exchanges mm. but when you have a chauvinist attitude like the arab uh, chauvinism 
uh, that's manifest through the Wahhabis. There's no cultural exchange. It's dominance. Yes, and, yes. Uh, and dominance is the whole point of cannibalism. Okay, and I mean cannibalism is the ultimate expression of dominism. If you have mm. cannibalism, like the Aztecs. Okay, they they ate their enemies. <coughs> they ate their enemies. They would eat the substance of their enemies, and this was an expression of dominance. Okay, and that's what the Arabs are doing. Uh, for example, let's just say you, you're you're an Arab and you have some Pakistanis working in your country, and uh, you're feeding them the worst slop. You're giving them the worst wages. Okay, you're consuming them. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're fattening yourself at their expense. Yes, that's what's happening. This is the same thing, you see. So this is not Islam. It's not Islam at all. And what uh, what Erdogan is doing in Turkey is some something similar. Okay, now he wants to consume all the other Muslims because he wants to be recognized as the caliph, uh, the new caliph. Uh, he wants to resurrect the. Uh, the corrupt Ottoman uh, Empire, which will never happen. Uh, there will probably be a war over it, I'd imagine, uh, because he's dead set in his way. He's dead serious. And he's already shown that he's going to kill people in order to get his way. Yes. Okay? Irrespective yeah. of whether or not he's justified. That he justifies himself. Right. And when you when you have this kind of mentality, when you have this kind of tribal mentality, uh, you 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 uh, and whether it's religious or whether it's ethnic, it doesn't matter because you can always find a way to justify yourself. This is what the Christians do to justify their trinitarian belief. You see, instead of studying the scriptures um, without a bias, they study them with the bias. You see, mm, that's and right. And they yeah. use the bias to interpret the scriptures. Mm. And then they see something that's not there, and they said, see, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> and they do this. They do this to justify uh, eating God. Okay? I, mm. I bring this up because it is cannibalism, again. It's very primitive. Tribalism is very primitive. Primitive. You not only eat your enemy, but you eat your God. Mm. You see, the Aztecs, uh, for example, they would take a captive. The uh, 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 one uh, <clears throat> a warrior would go out capture uh, some captives. Then he would give them to his tribal chief. Then the tribal chief would hand them over to the uh, priest or the king, or whoever represented the king, and uh, they would say, "Okay, well, they would ass they would assign." the captives to certain individuals who would then offer the captives as a sacrifice mm -hmm. but before offering these captives they would adopt them they would go to the captive and say okay now you are my son you are my brother you are my sister da 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 well, and, I'm, and i'm going to offer you to god <laughs> 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 okay so the Christians do the pretty much pretty much the same thing with the they've done pretty much the same thing with Isa. You see, they have um, offered him to uh, to God, uh, and uh, they, this is uh, all of this is an old ancient uh, pagan uh, worship system, religious system, very primitive. It comes out of Dravidia, which is where Pakistan is now, uh, the pre-Dravidian and the. Uh, uh, post-Dravidian societies there. I somehow believe that Cain and his relatives, Kabil and his relatives, went there and organized these savages into the first civilized religion. Uh, mm. And then they they offered their sons and gods as sons and gods of as, as daughters and sons of uh, of the gods in sacrifice, you see. So that's what the Christians are doing now. They're just another twist on the same story. Mm. And they justify it. And they justify it because of this mob mentality. And it doesn't matter what you say, okay, because there's a denial system uh, b uh, built into the human brain that once you've accepted something as the truth uh, and you believe this, irregardless of what the, uh, whatever the evidence is, and your tribe and your welfare depends upon this belief system, 
you've got a political organization based on a religious belief, mm. you regardless of whether you have facts to back it up, mm. you see. And so you're going to follow that mob. And then the mob's leaders are always going to create confessions. They're always going to lie or find a justification uh, to subject the other to scapegoating. See? Oh, mm -hmm. I would be a terrible, terrible tyrant, wouldn't I? <laughs> Never mind justification. Never mind justice. Never mind sin. Never mind intent. Okay? Mm -hmm. Never mind, uh, you know, when you have a mob running like that, they just consume everything. And yeah. everyone is other, including everyone themselves. Other. They will turn on themselves at a moment's notice, you see. Uh, because there's no government, there's no divine order at all, you see. So, getting back to this thing of Hadia Sophia, it's mob mentality at a fairly well uh, organized political uh, and religious uh, uh, system, uh, but it's still mob mentality, it's still primitive. There's nothing uh, culturally. There's nothing of high culture involved here, okay? Mm. You just have a mafia gangster, okay? A mafia don, that's what er Erdogan is, okay? Mm. You, he just might as well be the mafia don. And and the the ulema who are advising him, they are the consiglieres, okay? Mm. They are justifying him according to whatever scriptures they want to read, according to whoever hadith. There's nothing righteous about this, nothing at all, mm. okay? So I hope that answers something of your question. I wasn't sure that I really understood it, but... <laughs> Dr. Omer, Dr. do you think that... Uh, I've seen two leaders in the Muslim world recently mm -hmm. uh, who have been kind of like propped up as heroes. Oh. Uh, one is Erdogan, the president of Turkey. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Turkey has released all these uh, movies and these kind of like uh, serial movies uh, uh -huh. have become so famous in the Muslim world. I don't know if you heard it because I know you're kind of like isolated. But yeah, it's I, I don't, like, I don't my mom's understand. like, did you watch that Turkish program? I'm like, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, Everyone's watched these uh, uh, mm. these, these programs, Artigil, and uh, all these Turkish programs that are like, and, and that's one of the things that makes me very suspicious. And I wanted to know if I'm thinking in the right direction. Okay. All of a sudden, when here in the U.S., just just in front of the White House, in front of the White mm. House, the oh. Turkish government built a thirty million dollar mosque. Wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Did. In they Maryland. Did. Like literally, like less than like uh, less than thirty miles away, there's this uh -huh. Turkish mosque, mm -hmm. very, 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 very similar to when Saudi Saudi Arabia and the United States had this kind of like customized Islamic version that they used to give to the Muslim Muslims in the U.S. Army. They would come to this place, but like kind of like this U.S. and Saudi, they had this kind of like understanding. Okay. You know, and, and the Saudis would be able to send money in the U.S. and Islamic organizations, some of them would take them until mm -hmm. I, I think after 9-11 it stopped. That was a, mm -hmm. a blow to a lot of Islamic organizations here, by the way. Mm -hmm. But that being aside, I see something very similar here happening now where Turkey is all of a sudden in the media. It's all of a sudden in the movies. It's all of a sudden in, uh, you know, building these big buildings that Muslims are like going from all these different places beautiful mm -hmm. mosque I'm, I'm saying very beautiful masjid they've made mashallah and, mm -hmm. and 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 you know they have their turkish scholars there and they give their speeches and they have activities and they have the turkish spa and the turkish bath and the turkish mm -hmm. uh just it's a cultural slash masjid yes yes really big one and 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 then coming out with the media with all these like movies and stuff it's mm -hmm. just a little fishy like it's it's like okay how, how how did they like all of a sudden in the last like two three years become also popular and with all these like you know uh channels of media and and they're trying to like build their image uh is this is this planned yeah. or well is this... if you're 
if you're aware of what's taking place uh, at the metaphysical levels of um, the political organization and thinking of the cult that is at the apex of the pyramid, uh, then nothing happens at, I mean, I'm not aware of what's taking place with, with Turkey. I mean, I, I, I just don't know, but I'm aware of the principles. If it is taking place and it's being allowed and it's spreading like this. Dr. Omer, I'm guaranteeing you ask your students at least 30% of all the Muslims in the world right now that, that are at least in the West, mm -hmm. at least 30 to 50% of them all have seen these Turkish programs. Yeah. Well, that's because they, they must be somewhere seductive. Uh, they must be appealing to the nafs, and uh, they would have to be um, uh, subversive, okay? Uh, uh, and I can say that uh, quite, uh, quite uh, with, with great confidence, okay, because without even knowing, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I understand the system that's taking place now. And the system is controlled by uh, the, the, those who control the media. And the media is controlled by the uh, cult. They're mm -hmm. controlled by the cult that people like to call the Illuminati. There, there's a, a group above the Illuminati, but we won't discuss those right now. There, there is a group that governs the Illuminati, okay? <laughs> uh, so, uh, and uh, those are ancient families. And um, nothing of that nature and with, uh, with that uh, great influence uh, is approved unless they say so at the high table. Let's just call it the high table. You know the John Wick movies. Yeah. There is a high table, okay? And it is the high table of Satan. It's the high mm -hmm. table of Iblis. And they do make decisions like this. And... Erdogan is part of that gang. Now he may not he may not act he, he may not actually realize it, okay? But if he signed contracts with them, okay, and uh it's it's kind of like uh, uh we'll go back to Mahathir in, in Malaysia. Um he comes out every once in a while and he you know, whenever he gets in political hot water. Uh, he he makes a statement about Israel and the Palestinians, and he shakes his fist, you know. He may even hold a conference. Well, all of this is useless. It's just words, okay? There's nothing of substance being done. So, and... Yeah, it reminds me of this movie uh, I saw, like, it's in the Urdu language, a movie, right? Uh -huh. the two tribal leaders, they, they don't like, they, their people, the two tribal leaders meet each other, and they decide, look, when my people are angry at me, I'm just going to say some things against you. Yes. yes. Okay. But it's not real. <laughs> and when your people are angry at you for some reason, mm -hmm. you go ahead and say things against me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and we're we're cool. Okay. And so this yes. is like a, an yes. Urdu drama in the Urdu mm -hmm. language. And, and I was like, wait, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> that's no, that's what they do. The political parties have the same agreement. The political party leaders have the same agreement. And it's all uh, play acting. It's just a stage, just like Shakespeare said, it's a stage. And people are taking this stage acting seriously. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to take it seriously to some, some extent because you're subjected to it. And you're subjected to it because you allow it, you right. see. And because you're, you see, your your father or your brother or your 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 cousin, you know, there's some big shot in the military, and they protect these bastards. Okay, <laughs> you know, the man on the street can't do anything about it unless the unless the man with the gun does something about it. You see, mm. you have to raise the sword. If you don't raise the sword, and all you do is speak words, you just play acting. It's useless. Okay, mm. so. Erdogan is 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 a part of this system, uh, knowingly and not knowingly. I mean, he, he talked about you know as soon as he did the Hagia Sophia thing, he talked about we're going to free Al Aqsa, but Israel and Turkey have such a good relationship. <laughs> all comes from Turkey. I mean, so mm -hmm. is that so? Yeah, I, I I'm not paying attention. 
these things anymore because uh, I, I'm at a, a different place right. uh, no, in my too. mentation these days. But um, all, all of these things only go one direction, and that's to hell. You see, it doesn't, doesn't matter who's, who's doing what or who's saying what. Uh, if they're not honoring the Sunnah, if they're not honoring uh, the uh, uh, justice, you see, Without justice, uh, Islam has no walls. There's no protection. Anybody can come in and walk through the house. Okay, uh, so if you have no justice uh, and you're not honoring the Sunnah, you're not following the Prophet's uh, uh, Sunnah, then uh, you know it, everybody's going to hell, and and the people who are following you, they'll go to hell right with you. You see, so mm-hmm. let them go. I've told you this before. Just let them go to hell. You take care of your seed. You build your ark. That's and right. uh, that's that's your concern. And recently, I mean, the last two three weeks, you've been uh, uh, talking about the Hagi. I've listened to a few of your positions there, and you're, you're totally justified. And you've been you've been holding up the truth like a good warrior. Alhamdulillah, and may God uh, uh, reward you for that. But this is not your major concern. Your major concern is to build the ark, okay, right. for the seed under your right hand. Um, so these people, uh, getting back to Mahathir and Erdogan, they're, they're, they're the same in, in a certain sense. You know, they sable rat- saber rattle, but they've got secret agreements with their enemies. They've got secret agreements with the enemies of the Ummah. Yes. Uh, Mahathir, when he built his new capital called Cyber Jaya, he hired the Israeli computer experts to wire the whole place. <laughs> Yeah, please, somebody, <laughs> somebody explain this. Or are they the only ones who know how? Uh, never mind, never mind. But in any case, uh, so the whole country's compromised, and it was compromised under his watch. And whenever he gets in trouble for compromising the country, you know, like one of his students, one of his uh, protégés, Najib is one of his protégés, Umno is... Mahathir's creation for the most part uh, so and they're the most corrupt political party uh, on the face of the earth they do nothing but steal that's all they do uh, I know from uh, personal experience having talked to one of the economic hitmen who was responsible for building this new oh. cyber jaya mm-hmm. I, I he tried to recruit me okay and I had several conversations with him, and he represented a, a firm in New England who was trying to milk this whole pro, uh, process uh, for as much as they possibly could. And they were very disappointed because the Malay political party stole two thirds of the money that was set aside from it for it. <laughs> you see? So they built this wonderful new city with only one third of the appropriations. The mm. other two thirds went into the pockets of the Umno political party. Okay. Mm. And his firm was very disappointed because they didn't get their share. Mm. They didn't get the share that they had expected, you see. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, that's how it is with these people. You, you can't expect uh, uh, any assistance any divine assistance under these circumstances. You see, you can expect it on an individual basis, uh, based on, you know, your own position with Allah, having been established through your own pious uh, 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 works and intentions and whatnot. whatnot. But the, the mob cannot expect divine intervention. They cannot expect the angels to come and frighten the hell out of the Meccan warriors. Hmm. This is not going to happen, okay? So um, uh, these people who are running uh, the show right now, they're running their mobs straight into hell. And just stay away from them. Try to keep your people away from them. Um, Some of your women are going to run after them, (laughs) like the prophet said. You know, when Dajjal and his people show up, they're going to make all kinds of nice promises. And women are really attracted to the baubles and the the sheen. And, uh, you know, all these handsome fellows doing their mighty deeds. 
So you might have to tie them to the posts or something. <laughs> but as far as I'm con as far as I'm concerned, if my wife wanted to run after them, I'd say, "Okay, goodbye. <laughs> See you. I'm not going to hell with you. Sorry." And uh, uh, not that she not that she ever would. But who knows? You don't know. I'm sure that Prophet Lut didn't never expected his wife to turn around. Yeah. You see? Yeah. I'm sure he never expected that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, in the end, we're, we're each judged individually, independently, uh, and independently of the mob, dear people. Get that? Get it very clearly. You're responsible for your own relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one else is. You are. Okay? And each one of us has a different degree of relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't ask me to explain it. You can't explain these things. You have to act in faith because the evidence is everywhere. The evidence is everywhere for the existence of Allah. It's everywhere, mm -hmm. every which way you turn your head. It's in the mirror. You look at yourself, you look at your body, you look at how wonderfully and fearfully you are made. The evidence is right there, staring you in the face. You are the evidence that Allah exists. And so therefore, you are responsible for your relationship with him, no one else. So don't go blaming it on the mob or on Erdogan or on me or... Uh, reminds me, there's these verses that just, you, you're reminding me of these verses that specifically oh, talk about, hmm. you know, talk about, specifically talk about that how on the Day of Judgment the, the, the mob followers are going to mm -hmm. try to blame the leader and <laughs> And Allah will say, you know, Allah will say there's double punishment for you in that verse. Yes. One, it will be a hasra. It will be like this, oh, like, uh, like a double, like you, you're going to like, you, you're, because they're going to say, give them double punishment because they led us astray. And and Allah will say, you know, that's going to be a hasra. It's going to be, it's, that's going to be part of your pain mm -hmm. that, that they're not going to get the double punishment. They're, mm -hmm. You're going to get. You're going to get mm -hmm. the punishment. They're going to get. They're going to get the punishment. You're going to get. And you know, even though there's another verse that talks about uh, people carrying the sins of others, uh, mm -hmm. that's there. But I think there's some followers that are like in the middle of being followers, and and you know, they're just going with the mob. They choose to go with the mob, like consciously. This is thoughtlessness, and. Um... It's a good thing that uh, that we are judged uh, for intention, uh, because uh, some people, you know, they don't think they think they're doing good. Uh, they think they're doing the right thing, and perhaps the angel will pluck them out. We don't know. Allah knows. But um, I can tell you this: uh, the mob mentality is not the men mentality of the uh, majority. Okay, when when you when, when the hadith and the, the 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 quran speaks about the majority it's speaking about the majority of people who have made the correct decision with the correct justification yeah. okay and so there we're talking about uh, uh, the not the the not not the uh, pedestrian we're talking about the alim Okay, now there was a time when the alim and, and, and the majority were uh, 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 justified and they had a certain order. It's just my understanding. Uh, I don't know from primary or secondary. This is what my students have told me, and I've, I've uh, been able to uh, get the gist of this from some of the reading that I've done about the Islamic history. But there was a time when there was an order of, uh, 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 of authority, um, almost like a papal sort of thing. Uh, but <coughs> you have different degrees of, 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 of scholarliness. And you get to a certain ex uh, extent where where your word is almost the word of one of these uh, 
uh, high, high scholars, uh, don't ask me for the Arabic term, don't, just don't, uh, his word is almost deemed to be equal to that of the prophets, okay, uh, under the advisement of Gibriel, okay? It's almost that, it's almost at that level, okay? It's not at that level, but it's almost there, okay? So, and this would then filter down, okay, to the man on the street, and the man on the street would say, oh, okay, I have no choice, I must to follow. And mm -hmm. they're, they're following a righteous decision that was made by the majority of right, rightly informed superiors. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you don't have that anymore. We don't, this is, we don't this have, is, they're called, I mean, I think you're talking about the word mujtahid. We don't uh, have them. Yes. No, they, they're gone. Okay. Well, uh, they, so it, there you, you, at you, first, you need a Supreme Court <laughs> or a, a proper institute. Yes. <laughs> the proper yes. Uh, governance, you know. Well, you, you see, know, each, execute that order. Yes. Each, each, each Ummah, each ethnic Ummah should have its own uh, Supreme Court with that caliber of informed people at yes, the top. Absolutely. And that they is. should not just be religiously informed, they should be scientifically informed as well, yes. you see. And so that they're all working together to come to this majority uh, decision. Yes. The majority decision does not belong to the political franchise. Mm. No, it belongs to the informed superiors, mm. okay? And that's what, that's what happened uh, uh, it, it, went, it, it, it was the, this is the Sunnah we're talking about. The, the Prophet would uh, hold counsel with his companions and they would decide together. The Prophet was not an authoritarian. Yes. He's never an authoritarian. Yes. He made a recommendation and if his companions countered the recommendation, okay, there was a, you know, he went along with them. And sometimes, sometimes they would say, the Prophet would say, we're going to camp here, like to fight, like a battle, yeah. in the case of yeah. Bahar. They asked him, Hal anta is this a command from Allah that we're going to camp here? Mm -hmm. And he'd be like, no. He'd be like, well, why don't we camp over there? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the prophet, yeah. He'd, he'd listen to them. He'd be like, okay, let's go over there. That's right. You see, uh, people are uh, are not differentiating the, the human uh, aspect of the prophet from the divine aspect that was under the counsel of Jibril. Obviously, Jibril saw things that the prophet didn't. But when Jibril was busy doing something else, he wasn't always talking to the prophet, you see. The prophet would make some pronouncement, and he wasn't always correct. And he needed, uh, you know, his companions. This is what I'm talking about, this, this counsel of the companions. And sometimes the counsel, you know, they're wondering what to do. The Meccans are coming. We don't know what to do. And then some slave, some Persian slave shows up. And he said, well, we used to build a moat around the camp, you know. And then the prophet said, hey, that's a great idea. And they all said, let's do it. Okay. Yes, and what did the prophet do? He got down there with a pick and a shovel and he dug, he dug the trench himself. OK, yeah. you know, you, you don't have leaders like this now. Right. Of course. So uh, and you don't have a council like that now. So you have to create your own. Now, I, I've talked to you before about this when we talked about conserving the seed, protecting the seed. You have to find the, the man whose uh, whose door you think twice about knocking on, you know, because when, if you go to disturb the man, you have to have a good reason, hmm. okay? A man who knows what he's on about, uh, you have to have a good reason to disturb him. You don't disturb him otherwise, hmm. okay? Now, if you're just coming for a visit, a social visit, that's okay. If you're going for business, whatever that business might be, you better know what you're on about when you approach such a man, hmm. okay? Or you're going to get your butt kicked, okay, physically or metaphysically, one way or the other, because such men they don't play games, right? They don't. There's no nonsense. So you need a council of men who don't play games. There's no nonsense, uh, you know, uh, 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 about. And, and there's no. There's no um, uh, philosophical uh, game playing taking place, you know. They're like the king in in India 
who uh, entertained some philosopher who was trying to tell him that uh, the reality was just an illusion, da, 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 da. And so the king said, okay, um, uh, uh, you see that elephant over there? Let's see if you can outrun him. <laughs> outrun that illusion, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> the, you, 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 need, uh, you need a council of men and women like that. You need women who also know nonsense ladies. Yes, yes. None of this false piety. Let's get, get, get down to business, okay? Yeah. Can you cook or you can't cook? <laughs> you know, right. can you do it or you can't do it? Can you please your husband or not please him? Hmm. What's your problem, lady? You see, hmm. get, to, get down to it. Get down to the brass tack. Get down to the, the reality. You need people like this in your council of elders, in order to build the ark, you you need help to build the ark. Okay, so um, this is uh, this is what what the case case is. This is what we're confronted with now, and every every Muslim who has a an ounce of insight into these matters understands that this is the reality. So when you're dealing with what you have to deal with there on the streets in America right now, you need these kinds of men right at your shoulder to shoulder. That's okay. right. You need these kinds of families shoulder to shoulder uh, to figure out what to do, how best to uh, make your stand. Because the people who are out in the street right now, these Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter people and whatnot, uh, it's a tolerant society because uh, of its democratic position and uh, its history of uh, just bringing everybody in. I think Black Lives Matter is being used by somebody yes. just anarchy. Of, in the US. of course they, of course they are, and the leaders know this. Not the not the common person uh, who's you know gearing up to to go out and make some mischief. They don't understand that they're being misled. But the leaders know. They know who's paying them, mm -hmm. and they know that they get orders. But they don't know. They don't see the depth, okay? Because all of this satanic business is compartmentalized, okay? So you have cells upon cells upon cells upon cells, and so you get down to the seventh or eighth tier. They have no idea that the third tier exists. Mm -hmm. They may know that there's a tier or two above them. But they don't know who those people are. They only know their immediate connection. Right. And so all of this is compartmentalized. And these people are, you know, they're just the blind leading the blind. Uh, and even at the top of the pyramid, they're blind. Hmm. You see? Why are they why do I say that? Well, they may be intellectual, they may have all kinds of uh you know, natural uh wisdom you know, psychological wisdom, all this sort of thing, but they don't have the refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't have this guidance. They have the guidance of Iblis, and mm -hmm. Iblis is sending them to hell. <laughs> and <laughs> they, they don't realize that some of them don't, don't think that hell exists. I've met some of them said they'd rather rule with mm -hmm. Satan in hell. I've met them face to face. Okay, and they had this idea. They really believe it. So these are the kinds of people that you're you're confronted with. They have no love for you. They they have no love for anyone other than themselves. They're purely selfish. This is why uh, the, the the scripture calls Cain the selfish one. The the, uh, the um, uh, Quran calls Cain one of the selfish ones. Okay, he became one of the selfish ones. He wasn't the first one. So you have to say, okay, well, who else was out there being selfish? Okay, nobody is asking these questions. You know, archaeologists uh, and uh, anthropologists are trying to answer these questions, and the Muslims are just ignoring all this science. There's a whole whole world of science out there that is unexplained in terms of uh, the Quran. Okay, that nobody's looking at. They're just ignoring it because they're too stupid to understand it. Mm -hmm. They're too uninformed. And when you have an alim like that, you cannot have a wise council. You cannot have a council of wise people. It, they don't exist. 
you see. I, I noticed in one, uh, in one of your comments uh, earlier on, you know, a couple of months ago, uh, uh, somebody said, well, the men, the men that Dr. Omar is talking about don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> you see, well, they, they, they do exist. You have to look for them because they're, they're quiet. They're unassuming. They don't want attention. Hmm. You see, they don't want attention because with that attention comes responsibility. And they're afraid of the responsibility, just like hmm. the righteous caliphs were afraid of it. Oh, I don't know if I'm a king or an emperor or what am I? I, I don't know. He's fearful. And so these men, they'd rather, they don't want the job, you see. They really don't want the job, okay? Mm -hmm. You have to find them. You have to seek them out. And you have to say, oh, wise one, please, oh, strong one, please, come advise us. Come lead us. We need help. We need your help. Okay, so these kind of people you have to seek out, you have to find them. They're the quiet ones. They don't make noise. They don't stand up. Uh, they don't, uh, they, they, they stay away from the minbar, to tell you the truth. Mm. They stay away from it. And they only approach the minbar because they've been appointed to it, not because they desired the position. Right, right. So if they're at the minbar, they're there because they've been appointed, not because they sought the job. Right. And this is the Islamic principle. These men are there. You just don't know they're there because you don't know what to look for. Hmm. You see? Uh, so if, if people are looking for, uh, you know, if you're looking for puppets like Erdogan, oh, did I just call him a puppet? Yes, I did. Yeah, he's a puppet on the string, and Iblis is pulling the strings. It's that simple, okay? So I don't have to know anything else. I really don't have to know anything else. You see, people can, can look at me or some other people like me and say, oh, so-and-so said this is going to happen 10 years ago, and look, it's come to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not because I'm a prophet. That's not because I have any great spiritual insight. It's because that's what happens. Mm. <laughs> That's what happens when you're out of divine order. That's right, yes. It is the automatic result of the spiritual laws that we talked about. Mm 